Hello again, this is Kenny Leach here with the National Football Foundation College Hall of Fame, St. Louis Tom Lombardo chapter. Tonight we have two individuals with, which have helped cultivate the soul of our St. Louis chapter here in St. Louis for the National Football Foundation. We have Bob Button, who's been the executive director for 30 years. He served as coach. He started the Wesco uh, Little League football program and has been a brilliant conductor and orchestrator for the St. Louis chapter itself. And we have Steve Savard, our own St. Louis Steve Savard, sportscaster, voice of the St. Louis Rams from 1999 to 2015, and a respected news anchor. Both will discuss what the NFF St. Louis Tom Lombardo chapter means to them. Tune in now. Hey, Bob, how you doing, Steve? Very well, guys, thank you. Thanks for joining us again today. I'd like you guys, if you don't mind, to start out by telling the viewership about how you guys got to know each other and, and your friendship. Steve, you can go. Well, <laughs> well you, you know, you're, Bob is the lifeblood of the organization. He's the guy that got it going and started. He's the reason why we've been so successful. Excuse my dog here, for whatever reason, she's decided <laughs> That she's going to be in my face here. <laughs> she was quiet until we started this. Um, no, I've, I've known Bob and the Button clan since uh, I was uh, very, very young, six, seven years old, back to the old junior football league days. I never had the privilege, like my friends did, of playing for Bob because I was always a little light. Uh, I wasn't light enough in the rear end. I always carried <laughs> a few extra pounds. So I always played heavies when I uh, grew up, but uh, I, I did I did tangle with Bob's team scrimmaging when we were like uh, nine heavy and they were 10 light. We were 11 heavy, they were 12 light. And so I, I've known Bob and, and the whole Button family. They're like the first family of Parkway North, by the way. Um, and I've known them for decades and decades and decades. So when I got back to St. Louis in 1994, when Bob asked me to help out and join the organization, I jumped on board right away because I knew anything Bob was involved in was going to be first class. And that's been my experience 27 years in the making. Definitely. And Bob, I guess, were you with, was it Westco? Is that the organization that Steve was talking about? Yes, sir. Yeah. Tell us a little bit how you got involved in with Westco. Well, uh, Joanne probably doesn't want to hear it, but we were uh, married age and uh, I saw an ad in the paper that they were looking for uh, youth football coaches and uh it was Olivet then and uh I called and uh it was a real easy uh, job application and all you had to do is show up and uh uh that was like 1962 I think and then in 64 they said that they needed a head coach so I took over as a head coach job and uh it was with Jimmy Beckman uh God rest his soul but Jimmy was from Mercy High School a legend and learned a lot from Jim and leadership and just being a, a gentleman and uh and then we started Wesco, I think, in like 1970, and uh, um, I became president of that organization, and we had 12 teams, and uh, I think we competed very well. I think we did it the right way. We had a bunch of really, really super coaches, as Steve can attest, because he played for a couple of really, really good coaches, and uh, uh, that's, that's how I got involved. Spent about 30 years there, and uh when that was over, I was about ready to, to call it over. And then I, a friend of mine, coach, wanted to know if I wanted to come back and coach another team. And we spent about four years at Bonham. But uh, uh, and, and the reason I got involved with the Football Foundation was uh, I, I was through with everything. And um, the, the Sports Commission in St. Louis, who had in, it, it involved Jim, Jim Otis and Bill Coleman from the Big Red and Ed Belton, God rest his soul, in the, in the, from Ledoux. And, uh, they, they were surprised that uh, St. Louis High School football didn't get enough attention. So somebody uh, suggested that uh, maybe a chapter of the National Football Foundation would be helpful to high school football. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, they needed a, an executive director. And uh, Denny Staub told them they thought he thought he had somebody. And believe it or not, I got interviewed <laughs> for, for this high-paying job. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, so anyway, we started from there and uh, fortunately we were able to bring Steve on board as kind of Steve is overplaying it. I mean, Steve has been the face of our, of our chapter because our luncheons are that we've had that have been very successful. Uh, all the guys look forward to Steve and I've never understood Kenny when we're at Lombardo's 
and uh, and Steve walks in. All the girls think that there's a difference between myself and Savard, and I've never understood <laughs> that. Well, uh, <laughs> he uh, so he's Steve's got a lot of titles. He went on from from St. Louis here to Northwest Missouri State and played football there. And, and gosh, Steve, that's that's an incredible program now, isn't it? Oh, that's wonderful. It's fantastic. Uh, we, we're so proud, not just uh, football, but basketball. And, and if I can brag for a minute about my Bearcats up in Nottoway County, Missouri, uh, three of the last four national championships in college basketball, Division II basketball. And it might have been four out of four had it not been for, uh, or it might have been four out of five had not been for the fact that the Division II tournament was canceled last year because of COVID. Yep. And six national titles. And, and I, I feel like we did a little bit of our part Back in the 80s, 1984, we were the first team to make the national playoffs. But what Mel Churchman started up there in the mid-90s and what he and Scott Boswick were able to accomplish and then what Adam Doral did, it's pretty remarkable. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very proud of, of, of what they've done at the Division II level. I mean, they're doing it right. And, and then you came back uh, to be our, one of our newscasters. And, of course, you know, the voice of the St. Louis Rams from 1999 to 2015. Uh, and as a news anchor, it's but. been fun to be part of the organization. Um, I've had a nice run in St. Louis. Certainly uh, when I started out, I got kicked to the curb in the NFL at age 24, a couple of training camps, a broken neck, one year in injured reserve. That's what I had wow. to show for my time in the national football league. I didn't and, know that. Uh, getting back. Yeah. And getting back to uh, yeah. that's what finished me off at the t ripe old age. If I, at 24, I, I joke, I said, this is when, you know, you're uh, NFL career was really more of a stint when your first television sports job is in Billings, Montana for $12,000 a year. That means everybody really recognizes what, what a great career you had in the National Football League. But getting back to St. Louis and being involved in football and then, of course, broadcasting NFL games in my hometown for 16 years was special for me. It got me back close to the game. And really, it was the, the fringe benefit really that I couldn't have imagined was what it meant to my parents. Uh, all those years of being able to turn their kid on, whether I was in the anchor seat or the sports seat five nights a week and then listening to their kid call NFL games for 16 years. So it's been a great run here in St. Louis. I'm very appreciative of it. And Bob, when you, when you started out this organization, I know, you know, this is named after Tom Lombardo. And uh, tell us a little bit about how that came about and how, um, how that's important. Well, we were originally just a St. Louis chapter and, uh, uh, I grew up near the Lombardo restaurant when it was down Riverview in West Florissant. And uh, as people do, I walked in the restaurant and I saw all the pictures and the plaques and all that. And it was like just another face on the wall. And um, one day I went in there and I, I started reading him and I thought, oh my God, you know, Tom Lombardo is this and Tom Lombardo is this. So I went to Carmen, the one of the brothers, and said, Carmen, would you have any interest if we renamed our chapter in honor of uh, Lieutenant Lombardo? Because See, when he was killed, he was a great, great high school athlete in St. Louis and a great student. And they vowed when he died that they would never forget him. Well, you know, as time goes by, the, the uh, player of the year, which was named for him in Seoul and where he went, you know, all of a sudden the plaques were disappearing. And so I think we like resurrected him. I mean, uh, we, we brought him to life again and continued on. There's an article hanging in their restaurant now where Bob Bragg, you know, wrote that uh, I think one of the greatest stories about Tom Lombardo is when they had that great team where they were the national champions. They were playing, getting ready to play Notre Dame. And uh, Tom Lombardo went to Coach Blake and said, you know, we'll be a whole lot better tomorrow if the other quarterback starts and I don't. And I tell our kids that when we meet with them before when we have a pre-meeting with the parents, I said, how many kids would give up a starting quarterback position? But um, when, when we, the, the Lombardos gave me the archives of, of Tom Lombardo. And when you read the stuff, Kenny, uh, I mean, when he was when he was in combat, I mean, the, the, the troops and you would understand that that the the regular foot soldiers, they didn't like people coming out of the army because they thought they were, you know, better than them. But they said Lieutenant Lombardo was uh, was different. He was in our foxholes. He made sure we had blankets. He cared about us. So, I mean, I think that if you want to to have a, a personality or a vision of what you want kids to be or, or our, our scholar athletes to be, Tom Lombardo is everything. I mean. Uh, I got to meet about six, seven of those players from that team before they passed on. And uh, they all said, the minute he walked on our campus, we knew that he was our leader. And they said, he didn't give a damn what position he played. He didn't care anything, but he says, you better, you better play your best if he's there because he's going to get in your face. All he wanted to do was win and play well. So I think that uh, 
uh, it it helped put a name to our to our organization and all co create a profile. Um, we're able to tell the kids that 125 chapters across the country, no one has their name Tom Lombardo on the plaque, and Tom Lombardo is tied to the very beginning of the foundation. So I think that uh, when it was like four or five years after, then we changed the name to the St. Louis Tom Lombardo chapter, and I think it's been wonderful, and I think Steve would agree. What a, what a wonderful legacy. Steve, what would you say are some of the characteristics that are important in, in football and, you know, that, that, that maybe Tom Lombardo Barter shared at one, you know, when he was alive? I encourage every young man that uh, we honor at our banquet every year and, and anybody I come in contact with to really read the story of Lieutenant Tom Lombardo. It's pretty remarkable. Um, you know, football for me, starting at age seven, you know, it, it, it prepared me for a lot of things in life. And, you know, among the qualities you need to succeed in the game are um, selfless nature. Uh, it's not an individual sport, it's a team sport. It's not about one guy, win or lose. It's about the team, it's about the collective. It requires a lot of discipline. It's not for everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's not a game you just take lightly and say, well, I'm not really crazy about it, let me go play it. No, nah, that, that doesn't really work. It doesn't work that way. And the great thing about the young men we're honoring, uh, sometimes, Sometimes we do have high profile athletes, kids that are all state, um, you know, highly recruited, but more often than not, 70% of our kids are just good, really good football players that may not be um, heavily recruited. Many of them won't play in college. Um, some don't play for high profile programs, but these are the kids that need to be honored as much as the kids who do carry the high profile and the big names and have name recognition. And we're honoring them for being not only good athletes and good football players, but for being leaders on the field, being leaders in the locker room, being leaders in the community and being good students and for um, making all the right decisions at that age. And it's not easy. Um, every generation, you probably say it gets harder and harder to be a kid. I think it's harder now than it was when I was in high school um, in the early eighties. So I just feel strongly about recognizing and honoring young men for making the right decisions in life at an early age when many don't. And I also think the other component, and, and I've, I've tried to reinforce this when I've emceed the banquets uh, over the years, I think it's, it's important that the parents enjoy the recognition too, the guardians, whoever was the influence, whether it's a, a nuclear family or extended family, if it's an an aunt, an uncle, grandparents, uh, a guardian, a foster parent, somebody is guiding that young man mm -hmm. and encouraging them to make the right decision. So I think it's a celebration when we honor these young men every year, it's a celebration not only for the young man, but for their families as well. And, yeah. and you know, Tom, Tom, uh, uh, Bob can speak much more to what made uh, Tom Lombardo such a special human being, but from what I've learned, he would be very proud of what we do every year and the fact that we have handed out more than $300,000 in scholarship money to young men who at one time, uh, he was just like them. One thing to add to Steve, to verify the leadership, what I do is when we, uh, our, our selection committee picks the kids, I'll go through and uh, Steve will always ask, what do you think the average GPA is? And it, I mean, Normally, with the 11 scholar athletes uh, on a 4 0 basis, they're like 4 3, 4 2. Uh, this year, I think our, our top GPA student is a 4 6. Uh, but then when you look at it, I'll bet you every year there's seven or eight of them are captains. So, in other words, it's, it's our selection committee does an awesome job. And it's a very, very objective group of people that some of them don't even look at the school they're from. They don't even look at the name. They just read the, the resume in terms of their grades, what the coach says about them, how they play. And then they'll, they'll look at their community service. So I think that to uh, kind of confirm, go along with what Steve's saying, we get kids that are very, very unusual. And with you starting this program, going back and, and uh, uh, interviewing some of these kids, I think you're seeing the results of, of our, our organization picking kids that they're the future of our country. I mean, they, they, they're just totally awesome. We had, uh, uh, we invited th three of them, but two of them showed up, Andy, Andy Special, which was one of our first classes out of Edwardsville, and then Johnny MacArthur. And uh, they're both successful business people. Uh, Andy's an attorney. Uh, John's an investment uh, banker. In fact, he sponsors the table every year for us. And uh, they're just quality, quality people. And when you meet the parents, um, 
sometimes they're just very normal people that have produced a really wonderful, wonderful human being. Uh, so I th to me, it's, it's energizing. You know, they always say when you, when you, you're a volunteer that when you give, um, I had a high school teacher say who gives gets. And, uh, when, when you spend the time and work on this, you get more out of it because you get exposed to kids that are just, just incredible. Not, not just on the athletic field. I mean, they're really nice kids. And, uh, that that's to me what drives drives me or drives the organization. The the quality of the kids and what they go on to do is just amazing. They're they they sometimes are the best on the team, but they're really the best for the team. You know, the selection committee's done a great job, as both of you guys had said, and and really surprisingly, they pick out these diamonds in a rough that you you know later on they become these astounding people that we're finding out you know now. Um, so kudos to the selection committee. They do a great job. Um, tell me a little bit about um, the, the NFF chapter itself. Bob, can you kind of tell us the difference between the chapters and, and the headquarters and, and um, a little bit about uh, how the College Hall of Fame kind of joined in a little bit later too? Well, basically the, the, the chapters uh, at one point, probably within the last 10 years we haven't, but when I first got involved, they would have a meeting every year of the presidents. And we'd, we've been to Notre Dame, we've been to Cleveland, we've been, I don't know, three or four different, we hosted at the region one year. And uh, uh, basically, uh, I'm not real smart, but I can steal and I can cheat. I mean, I'd go to these meetings and, and you know, you'd hear these guys that have a lot of energy, a lot of activity. There was a guy by the name of Gleason. I think he was a commissioner of, I, can, I can't think what conference. Man, I just wrote down notes because he had more good ideas. Here's to the winner that we always play at the end of the banquet. He told me, he said, you play, here's the winner. You're going to have every mother and father crying. And I said, we're going to get that one. Okay. And, uh, uh, so, so you learn from that, but to be honest with you, a lot of the chapters are not really active They're, They They have a banquet. Um, and sometimes it's a good old boy deal where there's a bunch of ex football players that are involved. And I know Joe Owens, who was our regional director for years and years used to tell us that what we do best as a, as an organization, we introduce the kids, and then we have a banquet and then we, we, at the end, we close with them. So he said, you guys never forget the kids. He said, some banquets will introduce the kids and then the adults just go on and they have, you know, a good time. And uh, we'll never forget that. We've been criticized because we interview them in the beginning and then we present them at the end. And uh, I try to tell them, I said, it, it's about these kids. And when you see their highlights and when you read the, the bio that, that's written, um, there's some just fantastic kids. One of the story I want to tell you when, when Steve mentioned some of the kids in it, I wish I'd remember the kid's name. I don't, but five, six, well, not even that long ago. Cause I think the kid's still at Rolla. And I, I want to say he was from Fort Jamal North. I'm not sure that he wrote in his, in his bio or in the application we got when he was eight years old, he told his mom and dad that he had enough gifts that he didn't, he didn't need anything else for birth, birthday or Christmas and that. So by the time he was 16, he had given a hundred bicycles away to kids that needed them. Well, eight years old, I wanted a lot of things, but I didn't want to give a bike to Kenny Leach. I'm telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty remarkable, isn't it? But, you know, you find these people, like like Steve was saying, it's not just about their athletic ability, it's about their heart, you know, and, and that's a good example of that. Um, what about Steve? Can you describe the night to some of the people who have never been there before? Because it's pretty impressive with the tuxes and all that stuff. It really is. It's uh, it's a night to remember, and I, and I, I think the kids, the kid, we we've gotten feed. I've gotten feedback years later, not just from um, occasional student athletes, but also from their parents that we were there that night. It was so wonderful, and you know, it's a it's a it can be a long and tough night for the MC. It really can. Hence the <laughs> kicking under the table when things don't go right. Um, but, and, you know, I got to give Bob credit, you know, uh, a few years ago, we just, he decided that he was going to pile more responsibility on the MC <laughs> by interviewing the kids and bringing them down. And, you know, it's always, listen, Ken and Kelly and Bob, you know this, it's always a little bit of a gamble when you, when you ask a 18 year old young man to come down in front of a ballroom of 500 people and then answer some questions cold and 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 some of them claim up most of them are remarkable yeah. but I think it's really I think it's made the, the night even better and more special because you get a chance to talk to these kids and you get a chance to ask them questions about mm -hmm. to Bob's point what in the world would motivate you to pass on gifts when you're eight years old and think about other people and I think it's added to the night and so um 
Yeah, I think the focus is where it's supposed to be on the kids. And I, I listen, it's a first class event. And like I said, some of these kids, it, it's the last hurrah for them. I would say 60% of them aren't going to play college football. And maybe it's come down over the years. I would say earlier, 25 years ago, I said fewer kids were playing college football. But I'd say no more than 40% now of our kids we honor every May are going to go on and play college football. Mm-hmm. So it's the last hurrah. And, and we're giving them one more look back and one more round of applause for not only what they did as a, as a student athlete, but as a leader, um, as a member of the, of the school community and the community at large. A lot of these kids are doing, um, in addition to being straight A students and over 4.0 GPA kids, in addition to practicing football, they're doing work in the community as well. So for all those reasons, it's, it's just, it's one more, it's, it's reinforcement one more time for a job well done by these student athletes. And I think, and Bob's heard this before, when I get feedback, when I'm somewhere and I run into a parent and they said, my son was in the class of 2002, we still remember that night. We still talk about it. In fact, as I'm talking about it right now, I get goosebumps. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it all worth it. Even though Bunton is relentless about piling on work on the MC. <laughs> well, he picked the right guys, I'll tell you that. He's so you gotta give him that credit, Steve. What, hey, Kenny, what he, excuse me, Kenny. See, he's been the bell cow since he's seven years old. He's <laughs> had the ball four hundred times a game and he's made all the damn tackles. So I mean, come on. Yeah. When you when you got a talent like that, you have to use it. You gotta <laughs> use it. Put him in the game. You know, so so let's tell some of the viewers that may not be members. What are some of the other benefits of being a membership besides, you know, uh, you know, supporting these people that that uh, are great for our community? What are some other events that they can get involved in stuff that come with membership? Well, I'll just jump in right now and, yeah. and, and, and talk about, listen, over 26 years, maybe 20. Uh, Bob, how many bankers we have a year? Eight. I mean, lunches. Eight. Eight. Yeah. So we start in September. We end in April. So. Uh, the camaraderie is remarkable. Um, we have great guests like uh, the late, great, my good friend, Jim Hannafin. Um, mm-hmm. We have a night where a day where we just honor former big red players. The storytelling is remarkable. Um, we have a coaches luncheon where we honor the, the, the great coaches uh, of the St. Louis area every December. Um, so if you're into football and you have a true appreciation of the history of St. Louis football, you know, you don't want to miss out on these banquets. And every year we bring in, uh, in April, the Mizzou head coach, Gary Pinkle. In fact, I just ran, I was in Florida, uh, recently and I was at the gate waiting to come home on Monday and, in Fort Myers and there's Gary Pinkle and I, <laughs> and, uh, Gary and I caught, got caught up, um, for about a half an hour, it was great seeing him, but Gary made it a point to be at our luncheon, our last luncheon of the year, every April, at the end of April. And it kind of was a great uh, time because it was just finishing spring ball and then we giving us a preview into the next season in the fall. So um, there's just so much to get out of these luncheons. And, you know, everybody who's there, everybody who's a member loves the game of football and they have an appreciation for the coaches and the players that have made it great in the city. And that's reflected in the luncheons we've had. You know, and I know we have golf outings too, isn't that right? Yes, sir. You know, tell us a little bit about that and how, you know, that kind of brings together everybody too. Well, the, our, our, our organization somewhat is, is segmented from the standpoint, Steve mentions the luncheons and we have a lot of guys who are very, very, very loyal to the luncheons that's probably never been to the banquet. And we have a lot of guys that have supported the banquet that have never been to a luncheon. And our golf tournament is the same way. Uh, we started that because Paul Savage, God rest his soul, who was uh, played at Mizzou and was a big supporter. We lost him when we lost him. We lost a really, really great supporter of not, not only from a monetary standpoint, but he just supported everything we did. And he would bring people to to the luncheons or to the to the you know, So when he passed away, we named the golf tournament in honor of him. And then when John Cadillac passed away, we now call it the Savage Cadillac you know, uh, tournament because John Cadillac was, uh, was a speaker at some of our luncheons also. So we have the golf tournament, we have the luncheons um, and, and the banquet. Uh, we're trying to get more and more involved. I, I think with your involvement, Kenny, it, it uh, might free me to, to, to do some things I think that we can, uh, we can do besides this. Um, 
we, we'd like to be the, the spokesman for football, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to promote the, the game and get more coaches involved. Believe it or not, and this is uh, across the nation, the, the coaches are not big supporters of the National Football Foundation. Even though we have a strange business, we, our, our customers are coaches, and all we want to do is give them money or give them attention. And sometimes we have to beg them. I mean, we, we, we do not always get all the, we, there's a kid and I, I'm, I'm glad I don't remember the school, but I, I saw um, somewhere where he was, he was all state and he was a 4-0 student and we didn't even get his application. Yeah. And I think that's, that's terrible. It's, it's sad that somebody like that did, at least didn't get, doesn't get looked at. Well, let's try to, let's try to write that ship right now. I mean, you're talking $40 a year. You know, if you do a three year subscription, you, you can do it for $33 a year. It's 99 bucks. That's nothing. You get all of these opportunities to go to the luncheons like Steve was talking about with all these great names and insight. The insight is, is wonderful. I, I mean, because I mean, you're talking about people. I remember him coming a couple of years in a row, Steve. He's, he, he told a story one time that was really funny and you'd never hear it anyplace else. But he talked about how when he first came, and they didn't really have a winning season. It was no big deal. He'd ride his motorcycle up. And then <laughs> later on, as he was riding, he was saying, they were kind of saying, I don't know if we want you to ride your motorcycle because he was really winning a lot of games. So, yeah. you know, so there's some really cool insight that you get to, and you get to, you're, you're six feet away from these people, which is appropriate now. But, you know, that's awesome. That's $33 a year. That's nothing. So the membership money does bring us some opportunity for the kids. What are some uh, what are some sponsorship opportunities? How does sponsors help, and what are some of the benefits to the sponsors? Well, our sponsors. Once again, it's like any organization. We we have a, a handful of very very, very dedicated and and uh, yearly contributors, and, and we we can count on it. And we don't lose too many of them, uh, but it's hard to get to get a new one. Um, I know that when the Rams left town and we lost that money, Mike Owens. Uh, uh, you know, who is, who's big time from the Anheuser-Busch and, and from Mizzou, uh, kicked in and, and raised some money for us real quickly. And I found out how somebody that really is somebody, how easy it is to raise money. Uh, but uh, we, we, we function pretty well in, in terms of the covering our financial. And uh, Steve mentioned before, three hundred. We're, we're up over close to, if you take the some of the stuff that the Rams, have, we've probably given over $700,000 in, in, uh, uh, in awards and in equipment and all that. Wow. Uh, so, but people can, it can, we'll have people send us a hundred dollars or, you know, for a couple tickets, we have uh, uh, about eight or nine guys that sponsor tables, you know, at $550, we have people that send us a thousand dollars, 1500 sponsors the scholarship. Um, we've had one gentleman that uh, you never know if they want to be mentioned or not, but gives us like $3,500 every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've got a very loyal, small core group of people that, that, make it go uh, in our, see our, another thing we have mentioned, our recruiting breakfast is another wonderful event that mm -hmm. we, before the pandemic, we got up to over a hundred kids were there at Norwood Country Club. And the beautiful thing about that is that when Steve mentioned before about some of the kids that don't get attention, these are not the kids that are going to Ohio State, Notre Dame and Navy. These are kids that are going to sometimes schools you haven't even heard of, but they get to go in front of the microphone. They, you know, they get their mom and dad's there. Sometimes they bring their brothers and sisters and it's a, uh, you know, a continental breakfast. And some kids have never been in a country club. It's Norwood Country Club. Mm -hmm. Howard Richard comes and talks to it. Randy uh, Character has been our, our MC for that one. And it's a wonderful, wonderful event. And it, it's expensive for us, but we've been fortunate enough to generate enough funds to have that. Well, as a sponsor, then you have to feel pretty proud and um, about being a part of that and affiliated with that, I would think. You know, that's, that's one motivation. But we've had some good people step up in the past, I know, and you know better than I do. Um, talking about good people. So, uh, you know, you've had some good people working with you, Bob, like Steve and all that. I know one of them is your right-hand man, John, John Weiler. Oh, Lord, yeah. You know, can you tell us a little bit about how people like John Weiler have contributed to this organization and what they mean to you? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I go through this, I have a picture hanging on my wall uh, that I think we took like the first or second year. And uh, I don't know, there was eight or 12 of us. And I think we got six from the original 30 years ago you know, that have, have been with us. Uh, Eric Munwell, or a kid that I coached in youth football, he's been our treasure. And I defy anybody to have a better treasure than he is. Uh, he's very, very organized, very committed, very, you know, very, uh, very much appreciated. And then John Wilder and I've known one another for 50 years. And 
I Steve talks about dumping on him. Uh, I coached his son and and I ran into him at the grocery store on Sunday and I said to him, what are you doing tomorrow night? And he said, nothing. So you want to come to the meeting? And he's been working ever since uh, <laughs> because he's been with us through Wesco and through, through the 30 years of the football foundation. He's just a extremely talented man. that's very committed to kids and very committed to what we're doing. So uh, yeah, we've got a, a core group of people that uh, I think are committed to our mission and, and getting things done. So you need people on both sides. I think it's not just the, the people that you're recognizing and honored, but you need a good core of people to volunteer and help. And, 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 you know, I think that's what makes it all go. And I think that you've got that in this organization. You guys have had that for 30 years and it's an awesome organization. I'm, and I'm let me just add, if, I, if I could just add something too, when I got back to town and became involved, so I started uh, emceeing the banquets. This would have been 94. Uh, that year, 95, started uh, emceeing the uh, luncheons. You have to understand, and I have a, I had a great understanding of the history of, of, of St. Louis high school football mm -hmm. and amateur football. So among the people, Bob talks, talks about John Weiler and others who helped him start this organization. First, let's start with my head coach, Denny Staub, who uh, I have the world of respect for. We're still very close to this day. In fact, I owe him a phone call tonight, speaking of that. Um, so there's, there's, there's Coach Staub, who I'm very close to. Then at any time, uh, at a luncheon or the banquet, uh, these, are, these are the head coaches. You had Ed Velton, who is a legend. Okay. Yeah. And, and God bless Ed. My goodness gracious. What a personality. Ed Velton, oh, yeah. bigger. His personality is bigger than life. Um, then, then you go to Jack Jones. Okay. Another hall of famer in Missouri from Webster Groves. Then you go to Dale Collier, who I played against when he was head coach at Kirkwood. Unfortunately, a lot of these guys are Northeast Missouri state bulldogs and, my, and, and Bearcats <laughs> bulldogs don't get along, but I, I overlooked all that. I overlooked their past, their shady past up in Kirksville. And, and we still made the best of it. Um, and then you go on, and some of my favorite, favorite interactions at, at the luncheons were when Bob Christian, oh. the legendary, legendary coach at DeSmet, who at one point I really wanted to play for. It couldn't have worked out better for me playing for Coach Staub. But at one point, my dad used to take me over to DeSmet. We'd watch the games. And about halfway through, as he's ripping his team up and down the sideline, my dad would look at me and say, you sure you want to play for this guy? And I said, hey, I played for Gene Zaff and other guys in West Coast football. <laughs> I said, no big deal. But uh, And then uh, Paul Martell, St. Louis U High. Yep. These are the gentlemen that made – and and Bob can speak to the Ray Cliffs and that generation before yep. them. Um, but – those are the, those are the, in my eyes, those were the men that made high school football great in my era and, and the era before when I was growing up and I was in the junior football league. So to come back and rub elbows with them and be involved in the same process of building this organization, it was fantastic. But uh, no one, no one made me laugh harder at our coaches' luncheons than Bob Christian every December, God rest his soul. <laughs> Bob Christian was one, of, one in a million. Uh, I love that guy, and I'm sure I would have had a good time playing for him. Yeah, you know, you could go on and on and on. I, another name I didn't mention, Jack Wells with Parkway West. Did, right. And that, I, I did mention him because I was over two against Parkway West. In my <laughs> I hold a grudge. Steve Miller, who had an unbelievable program, at, of course, at Hazelwood Central, Rich Gorzinski at Hazelwood East. Um, Mick Pictagio at, at Lafayette, who I competed against, uh, Stan Mock, and Lindbergh, who again, I competed against. So those were the guys that made, in my era, made high school football what it was in St. Louis, and to come back to town and then be their peer, so to speak, in this project was really, really fulfilling. You know, that's what I love about the luncheons, too. You sit at a table with a mix of people where you get the history of it, and, and the wisdom of it, along with, you know, some of the people like a Robert Steeples, too, that's just starting out, and he's got a really good attitude and you really admire. You know, so, you know, there's so much to be gained by being a member and, and coming to these luncheons. And, and as a sponsor, you just help in the community, you know, get better and better. You know, always, I, I really believe it comes full circle to you. Do you guys believe that? I think that if you look at, you know, the mission, in fact, I was writing something today with regards to Sunday's banquet, 
the, the, the theme of, of giving back is, is, I think, essential. And we've got a situation uh, this year, Brandon Roberts, who was one of our uh, Wash U College athletes, scholar athletes, probably 10, 12 years ago, maybe a little longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was so impressed with the National Football Foundation. He had qualified to go to med school and he went to New York because he was a national winner. And when he came back, he told Coach Kinbaum, he said, I'm going to take a year off and give back to the National Football Foundation. So he worked for the chapter tutoring kids in, in the city. And uh, just this week, I got a check from him again for sponsoring a table. And he, uh, and he always sponsors the table since he's been you know, in the medical profession. And he wrote a little note in and he said, I, I don't want recognition from the standpoint of myself, but I, I, I think he said, I've learned because he continues to tutor kids up in the Ohio area. He said, I've learned that kids respond when they see successful people give back to others yeah so, so we're gonna make a little mention of uh, how we got a you know a previous award winner that's not only a member but he continues to give back to the foundation and your point with members membership ken and, and see i think st louis have 500 members we, we get close to 200 but i mean when you stop to think 33 bucks it, that's not even a cup of coffee a day okay no. um we, we should have 500, but we, uh, believe it or not, I've, I've had some people say, oh, you know, I don't have time. Well, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not being silly, but we don't give any time or not to give us the 33 bucks. Okay. I mean, and, and to sponsor something that's really worthwhile. So. Or where can they go do that? Let's tell them right now. Isn't it, it, it can we go to the STL NSF yes. dot? Yes. And you basically can sign up um, by going to the chapters and, and just joining. Website. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, yeah, let's get the word out. You know, let's let's try to get the word out and and contribute to uh, a good cause that's been going on for years and, and hopefully will go on for many more. You guys have anything else to add? I mean, um, you know, as far as the organization goes or, you know, I appreciate you guys being here. You guys are both the soul of this whole thing, you know. Well, you give me too much credit. There are a lot of people that could fit uh, uh, um in that description, but I, and I, Bob would say this, but the Lombardo family has meant so much to us. I mean, it's, it's, it's really rewarding. It's been rewarding for us uh, to be able to, um, to keep Tom Lombardo's legacy alive, at least on our level, you know, um, because the Lombardo family have been, has been so generous and uh, so important to what we do. Uh, and I know that's, you know, Bob can talk more about that. But um, there are a lot of people we can thank. Um, no contribution is too small. And, you know, at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're saying to young men, well done. You know, yeah. and I think, you know, it's, 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 it's never been a bad time in my lifetime to do that. I think in 2021, it's an even better time than ever before to say to young men who make the right decisions, well done, and we're going to recognize you. And this is your moment in the sun. And for many, like I said before, this will be the last hurrah in organized football. And it's a night they can take to college and on to their other endeavors and, and remember forever. Well said. Yeah, well said. Great way to wrap that up. Thank you very much, both of you. Appreciate it.